I see an awful lot of misinformation on the internet about what it means to be an introvert. So today in this video, I figured I'd tackle that question. What is an introvert? In some ways, more importantly, what is it not? All right, before I get started, I want to mention that this video is part of a three-part series around the topic of introversion. This video, as I'm sure you saw in the title, is going to be about what an introvert is and what it isn't, kind of dispelling some of those myths and helping people understand a little bit better what it means to be an introvert. Now I'm gonna follow this video up with two more videos, one aimed specifically for introverts and one aimed specifically for extroverts. So make sure if you're interested, you click this card up here, which is a link to the playlist. Also, if you've arrived at this video early in the video's life cycle, and I haven't yet uploaded the other videos to the playlist, make sure you click subscribe and click the notification bell so that you're notified of the future videos. All right, let's dive in. There is this kind of cultural narrative that being an extrovert is good and being an introvert is bad. Even if you Google the definition, the definition says it's a shy or reticent person, which is not accurate at all. Even in an article I read while preparing for this video in Psychology Today of all places, they seem to deeply misunderstand what being an introvert is and conflate being an introvert with other personality traits that are shared across the spectrum. I want to read something for you. I'm reading because I, I don't want to misquote it. But this article in Psychology Today is talking about why ambiverts are the new ideal to strive for. But let me just read this paragraph for you. To be sure, diehard introverts and extroverts do exist, but they're exceptions, and they may be worse for it. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with the term ambivert or with being an ambivert, but I do think that it's yet another category that's often used to disparage introverts and make them feel less than, when really all it is is an introvert that kind of bucks the stereotype by being able to be extroverted for periods of time. But at the core, they're still an introvert. It's important to recognize that most of society is designed around an extrovert ideal. And when people tend to think of introverts, they seem to conflate specific qualities or character traits with being an introvert. And while certain outward personality traits do tend to correlate more with introverts, it's a correlation, it's not a causation. For instance, people tend to think of introverts as shy or anxious or antisocial or unable to collect their thoughts, or just this whole host of other kind of stereotypical weaknesses that come with being an introvert. And while I do think that some of those things can be associated with introverts for sure, and if you exhibit those kind of behaviors that there is certain effort you might want to put in in order to communicate with people more broadly, at its core, being an introvert is not about being shy or antisocial. The terms extrovert and introvert are best understood on a scale of stimulation and energy. And there's been a ton of research about how introverts need less stimulation. In fact, if they get too much stimulation, they can become easily overstimulated. About how their brains process information differently, even using different parts of the brain, and how they need to recharge differently than an extrovert does. Whenever I'm trying to describe to someone for, for the first time, how being an introvert is different. I like to liken it to recharging a battery. Extroverts recharge their batteries different ways than introverts do, that's all. Extroverts recharge when they're around people and when they're getting a lot of stimulation. Introverts recharge by withdrawing into themselves. And I think part of the reason this is hard to talk about is this is less of a conversation about who people are, but why they are. Even if you just take introverts you'll find a billion different ways that each introvert is different from the next. And that's part of the challenge of making a video like this is I don't want to overgeneralize, but at the same time I need to a little bit in order to make a succinct video that people will actually wanna watch. So for all the introverts that are watching this, I apologize for the generalizations I'll make throughout this video. I really like how Susan Cain articulates introversion in her book, Quiet as simply a preference for environments that are not overstimulating. And of course, this has ripple effects into a lot of things, but that at its core is what an introvert is. It's about stimulation and energy maintenance. 
It's not about being shy. It's not about being socially awkward. People, extroverts can be shy and socially awkward. <laughs> But we just have these myths in our society and ideals about the way a person should be that just need to be broken. Now, I guess that's a good segue into a couple book recommendations. I mentioned one. I'll talk about that a little more in a second. But the second one is called The Introvert Advantage. Now, this book came out before Quiet. And the reason I bring this up is because this book really was instrumental during my time of introvert self-discovery, I guess, if you could call it that. Uh, this book really did help me accept myself a little more. Now, I do think there are some problems with this book. For instance, I don't really like how this book seems to be written kind of at the expense of extroverts. I can understand why the author, uh, whose name is Marty Laney, I can understand why the author did this. Uh, she felt a need to speak specifically to introverts and maybe to help put words to some feelings that they were having and maybe weren't able to express. And as I mentioned before, the book is a little bit older and there's been some updated research, but overall, I think I still value this book. I mean, clearly I still own it and I enjoy going back to it once in a while. And there's some interesting research that she breaks down in there. Now, the second book I wanna mention here is a book called Quiet by Susan Cain. You might have heard of her. She was making the internet rounds and she did a TED talk while she was promoting this book. But the reason this book is my favorite on the topic is not only is it packed with research and even in more updated research, but as a self-described introvert, I think Susan Cain does a great job of not alienating extroverts. In fact, this book is less speaking directly to introverts and more speaking to Western society as a whole. And how her concern is that we are losing a bunch of value in society because of the extrovert ideal and how there should be a better balance between the two extremes of the spectrum. So this is a book for introverts and for extroverts, and I highly recommend it as anyone in my close personal circle <laughs> can attest to. I'll stick links to both these books in the description in case you're interested. Well, that's it for me today, guys. But before you go anywhere, make sure you check out the other videos in this playlist by clicking right up here. You know you want to. <laughs> All right, before I get stuck, ow. <laughs> it's not funny. Why are they calling it a funny bone? <laughs>